What's up YouTube, Jeff back again from DopeTechDaily.com and today I'm bringing you guys a one week follow up on the Android P Preview 3. Now last week I talked about all the new features in a video and I'll drop a link below in the description if you want to check it out. I had it installed on the Pixel 2 XL which I'm still running the Android P beta program on my Pixel 2 XL. Today I want to talk about battery life, uh, any of the bugs I've noticed. It's actually pretty stable so that's what I want to mention to you guys. If you really want to get in there and try it out, it's probably pretty stable enough for a daily driver. Uh, I haven't noticed any major issues yet. Obviously I have to be a little careful since it's a beta. But I'll tell you a few things I've noticed about the gestures, battery life, and a few other things that we found out in the last week. Now, in addition to the Pixel 2 XL, I've also been running the Android P beta on my Sony Xperia XC2 since I got back from Vegas. I've been on vacation, and I installed it on the XC2 as well. It came available about three days ago. So I want to talk about some of the similarities and differences. Now, first, the gestures. I talked a little bit about the gestures. They improve things a little bit. So when you swipe up now, you get into the app drawer a little bit quicker. It's a little bit smoother. But on the Pixel 2 XL, if you're using it one-handed, it's still kind of hard to flick up all the way into the app drawer. So you get into your recent apps like this, but if you want one smooth, smooth motion, it's kind of difficult to do that. Now what I've noticed is on the Sony Xperia XE2 is it's actually much easier to get a single little flip right up into the app drawer if you're interested in doing that. So I'll show you guys really quick on the XE2. If you go ahead and swipe up, you can easily get into the app drawer quickly. See that just one smooth motion. If you just sort of swipe up small, you get right into your recent apps. If you go a little bit further, you get into the app drawer. So you can see one-handed, much easier to get into the app drawer. Now that has some pros and cons. Obviously on the XC2, you have to be very light if you want to get right into the recent app screen, the carousel, because if you go too far, it's going to take you into the app drawer. So there's pros and cons to both, but I definitely think Google needs to look at this before the final release and figure out the optimal sort of amount of pressure with the one finger swipe up so that the gestures work. Otherwise, everything else about the gestures is pretty similar on the two phones. Uh, you do have the haptic feedback when you scroll from left to right on both devices when you're easily just sort of scrubbing through your apps. And that's definitely a big improvement. I think they've done a good job with the gestures, but like I said in the first video, I think there's still a ways to go. And perhaps the biggest thing is figuring out how to balance getting into recent apps versus also being able to easily swipe up in one smooth motion to get into the app drawer. The next thing I want to talk about is the battery life. So on the XC2, it hasn't been as good because obviously it's not optimized for the XC2, but on the Pixel 2 XL, battery life has been about the same as what I was seeing on Oreo. I'm still getting about five hours screen on time in my daily usage, which is pretty good overall. Uh, I have been using dark mode quite a bit because I've been using this dark wallpaper, which gives me a little bit of savings in terms of the battery life and everything like that. But the battery life has been pretty good overall. In terms of stability, I haven't noticed any major issues. A lot of people ask me about Android Auto. Android Auto runs fine. I've been using it with my Audi A6. I also use my wife's Audi A4, so it's the same manufacturer, so you wouldn't expect there to be a difference, but it works on both of those cars. I also have been using uh, banking apps, and also, of course, a lot of people ask me about Google Pay. Google Pay works fine. I've used Google Pay probably 25 times uh, to make payments inside convenience stores and restaurants since I installed the Android P beta. Absolutely no issues with that so far. Uh, all the other major apps, social media and media apps, I've noticed very minimal crashing. I had a little bit of crashing with Netflix, um, but I did a cash wipe on that and then it ended up not having a problem anymore. So I haven't seen anything that would really prevent me from recommending this as a daily driver if you're the kind of person who wants to be adventurous you know, and try some of the new things that are out there. Now the other thing I want to mention that I didn't notice in the first video because I kind of put together the list of features to get them out as quickly as possible is that the brightness slider has actually improved in Android P Developer Preview 3. So now when you use your brightness slider it no longer changes the brightness in a linear way, it changes it in a logarithmic scale, which actually gives you a better visualization when you're changing the brightness of exactly what it's gonna look like when you're using it daily. You guys can see right here when I go from the lowest possible all the way up to the maximum, you can see the noticeable change there on the logarithmic scale now. So that's actually a pretty big improvement and something you're gonna notice on a day-to-day -day basis, especially if you use the brightness slider uh, in your daily use. So that's something I didn't notice before, but something that's actually pretty important. 
Otherwise, the other two things I want to mention that have come to light since I did the previous video are a couple of things over on the Google products forums, which many of the various outlets have reported. The first one is that in the next version of the Android P developer preview, it looks like we're going to get a manual dark theme. So it says uh, people reported they wanted a manual dark theme option so you can switch between light and dark without having to set a light or dark wallpaper. It says they've added support for a dark theme to be applied to quick settings and launcher under settings display device theme. And that'll be available in a future Android build. This was reported uh, two days ago. Can only infer that this is gonna get updated in one of the developer previews or perhaps the stable release of Android P. And that's obviously a huge thing. I know a lot of people have been waiting for that. I'm excited for it. And then the bad news, so that's the good news. The bad news is a lot of people were complaining because Android P does not support substratum uh, theming and Google confirmed on the support forums, the issue tracker forums, that they have no plans to fix this uh, because it's a security issue and they're not going to allow substratum, uh, substratum theming through the overlay manager service. So if you are a big substratum theme fan, it looks like that's going to be dead unless you're using a custom ROM with Android P. So I know a lot of people are disappointed with that. If you check out the threads, you can see how many people are complaining and commenting. And I agree, it's a real bummer, but Google claims it's for a legitimate security issue. If that's the case, then obviously you can understand why, but it certainly seems like just PR, public relations speak uh, in their response there. I'll link it below if you guys wanna check it out. So anyway, that's my review of Android P, uh, running pretty stable on the Pixel 2 XL. The um, Sony Xperia X-T2 has a few problems, like you guys probably noticed the fingerprint sensor doesn't seem to work all the time with the Android P beta. Uh, it has a couple of issues there and more bugs, so I wouldn't really recommend running the uh, beta on your XC2 if you have one. But for the Pixel 2 XL, I think if you're kind of an adventurous type and you like to play with new software, it's stable enough that you can use your everyday apps. Anyway, guys, that is it for the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification icon so I can make future videos like this. Find me at dovetechdaily.com, Google+, Instagram, and Twitter. The link's in the description. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching.